Hi, it's Katrina. From alleged UFO sightings to beautiful but baffling natural phenomenons, here are six strange lights that have scientists all kinds of confused. Number 6. Earthquake Lights The phenomenon of earthquake lights is poorly understood at best but scientists have made progress in recent years toward getting to the bottom of them. Generally speaking, earthquake lights are best defined as mysterious glows that occur before or during seismic shaking. Reports have listed the duration of the luminosity as lasting anywhere from a few seconds to tens of minutes. The existence of earthquake lights isn't really causing any heated debates. They're actually a pretty common sight and have even been caught on film. Earthquake lights have been described in various ways. After the 2003 Colima earthquake in Mexico, people reported having seen colorful lights in the sky throughout the event. Lights were seen in the skies above the sea by many during the Peru earthquake of 2007, and similar sightings occurred and were caught on film during the subsequent earthquakes in Italy and Chile. In 2016 in New Zealand, onlookers spotted blue, lightning-like flashes in the night sky. Friedman Freund, an adjunct professor of physics at San Jose State University and a senior researcher at NASA's Ames Research Center, states that the lights can take many different shapes, forms, and colors. Common descriptions of the lights include ankle height, bluish flames, orbs of light that float in the air for anywhere from seconds to minutes, and bright red lightning-like strikes that stretch up to 650 feet in length and come out of the ground. Usually, earthquake lights are associated with events that register at a 5.0 or above on the Richter scale. According to Freund, people interpreted earthquake lights as the sign of the apocalypse. Now, some associate the lights with extraterrestrial life. For a long time, geologists nonchalantly dismissed the sightings as nonsense. In fact, until 2014, while scientists harbored suspicions about what causes earthquake lights, no groundbreaking theories existed. In 2014, new findings were released, bringing the scientific world one step closer to conclusive answers. All signs point toward the creation of earthquake lights resulting from specific types of rocks, such as basalts and gabbros, which have tiny defects in their crystals and may release electrical charges when seismic waves hit. To date, this is the most credible theory. However, scientists still have a lot to learn about earthquake lights. They should probably get on it, though. It's suspected by some that earthquake lights may help give us a warning sign. In addition to the proven factors that help scientists foresee earthquakes, this could potentially help vulnerable populations further avoid tragedy. Number 5. Steve In recent years, scientists have been baffled by a strange light in the Canadian night sky. It kind of looks like a purplish-white ribbon. The light is extremely hot, doesn't last long, and has been named Steve. Because, of course, if you see a light, you're going to name it. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, Steve stands for Strong Thermal Emission on Velocity Enhancement. Catchy, right? Amateur photographers have known about the bizarre light for decades. However, Steve only recently came to the attention of researchers who remain unsure of its causes or where it came from. It looks like an aurora, doesn't it? But during August of this year, research published in Geophysical Research Letters ruled out the possibility of Steve being some form of an aurora. Auroras cause parts of the sky to turn colors such as green, blue, or red at high latitudes and are directly associated with the protons and electrons of the Earth's magnetosphere. According to Bea Gallardo Lacourt, a space physicist at the University of Calgary, the display of colors that we refer to as an aurora results from charged, energized particles raining down into the Earth's upper atmosphere. This is called particle precipitation and is the main hallmark of an aurora. But like I said, Steve isn't an aurora, despite the long-standing tendency for aurora chasers to refer to it as a proton arc. So what is it? Researchers combed through satellite data archives for a good example of a satellite passing through an area experiencing Steve. During such an event in eastern Canada in March 2008, a satellite belonging to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, a U.S. government agency, you might know it as the NOAA for short, caught footage of the phenomenon. Gallardo Lacord reported that the light particles characteristic of an aurora were conspicuously absent in the NOAA satellite data. This means that Steve is not produced the same way an aurora is, and is therefore something entirely different. So what exactly is Steve? Well, scientists are still trying to figure that out. 
What they do know is that Steve could be generated by a new and fundamentally different mechanism in the ionosphere. Steve occurs within a stream of very fast-moving and hot gas and at lower latitudes than auroras. One of the researchers' main goals for determining Steve's origins is to figure out the altitude at which it forms. They plan to take spectrographic measurements of Steve to help them get to the bottom of the fascinating yet mysterious light. In addition to not knowing what causes Steve, what remains unclear to scientists is whether there's a relationship between Steve and auroras, and if so, what is it? Steve tends to occur when there's a lot of oral activity in high latitudes, indicating that there may be a connection between the two, including the possibility that the higher latitude oral activity may help to create the correct conditions within the ionosphere for Steve to form. We love Steve, he's so cool. Number four, the Marfa lights. Since the 19th century, the unexplained Marfa lights, also called the Marfa ghost lights and Marfa's mystery lights, have been seen near US Route 67 on Mitchell Flat, east of Marfa, Texas. Anyone from Texas here? Have you seen or heard of these lights? Let me know in the comments below. Stories about the Marfa lights have been going around since the 1800s and appeared in 1976 in Elton Miles' Tales of the Big Bend. It even featured the first photograph of the lights taken by a local rancher. Over the years, countless observers have reported seeing the seemingly sourceless lights on the horizon southeast of the town, in the direction of a nearly uninhabited area known for its rough terrain. The lights occur randomly throughout the night, regardless of the season or weather, and have been described by eyewitnesses as red, white, yellowish white, and or blue in color. They're distant and unusually bright. According to Michael Hall, an observer who claims to have seen the Marfa lights several times, they display unusual patterns of glowing, fading, disappearing, and reappearing. Spooky! According to Marfa's official tourism website, the strange and unexplained lights have been witnessed by people from a variety of professions and lifestyles, including high school sweethearts, famous meteorologists, ranchers, and Apache Native Americans, just to name a few and the sightings continue to this day. Some scientists and cynics believe that the Marfa lights are nothing more than atmospheric reflections of campfires and car headlights. Skeptic Brian Dunning pointed out that between 1942 and 1947, tens of thousands of U.S. military personnel were stationed at Marfa Army Airfield, which is around the same area as the lights. Later on, the property was used as a regional airport. In other words, it's unlikely that the lights would not have been seen or mentioned more than they were during those years if they were as unusual as some eyewitnesses claim. Many skeptics, including Dunning, believe that the lights are a mirage caused by sharp temperature gradients between cold and warm air layers. Following a four-day investigation, a group from the Society of Physics Students at the University of Texas at Dallas concluded in 2004 that the legendary Marfa lights could simply be the headlights of cars driving down US Route 67, which is visible from the Marfa lights viewing location. Believers have attributed the Marfa lights to ghosts, UFOs, and other paranormal phenomena. In a June 2006 article for Texas Monthly, self-proclaimed witness Michael Hall wrote, these lights weren't car lights. They didn't move like cars. Sometimes they just sat there, and other times they were absolutely playful, moving and winking at one another. Hell, they danced. Although the true nature of the Marfa lights remains a topic of debate, one factor remains consistent. New reports of sightings continue to pop up, and the phenomenon is therefore worthy of a continued, thorough investigation. Paranormal enthusiasts hoping to catch a glimpse of the lights firsthand can visit the Marfa Lights Viewing Center, there for your convenience. What do you think the Marfa Lights are caused by? Are they the product of overly active imaginations, or perhaps an optical illusion? Or are you a believer? Let us know in the comments! Number 3. Transient Lunar Phenomenon even NASA sometimes struggles to come up with explanations for strange lights in the sky, despite the agency's lengthy record for scientific breakthroughs. They've had plenty of time to try figuring out why astronauts have repeatedly talked about seeing strange flashes of light on the moon's surface, which come seemingly out of nowhere since the first Apollo mission in 1969. However, the persisting uncertainty revolving around these lights can't be blamed on a lack of trying to determine their cause. Scientists have formulated various theories over the years about flashing lights on the moon, termed in 1968 by Sir Patrick Moore as transient lunar phenomenon. That pretty much covers all the unexplained lights. Astronauts have described the lights in a variety of ways. Some have referred to them as white flashes, not to be confused with hot flashes, while others mentioned colors such as yellow and blue. 
In almost all instances, astronauts continue to experience these visions under certain lighting conditions after their return to Earth. One theory holds that these lights could be cosmic rays. Scientists tested this theory by constructing a black box that contained sensors capable of detecting cosmic rays. Astronaut Charles Duke wore the box as a helmet on his next mission and reported seeing the flashing lights at the same time cosmic rays were present. Another possible explanation stems from the existence of cold spots on the moon's surface, which contain thin layers of ice and frost that may create a flashing or blinking effect when reflected by the sun. The observer's eye may then be tricked into thinking the lights are coming from the moon itself. Elizabeth Fisher, a lead author of research conducted on the topic, points out that the moon's coldest spots are also its brightest. Those who claim to have seen flashing lights on the moon's surface are highly trained astronauts. Before going into space, not only must they prove via their academic and professional credentials that they deserve a seat on the shuttle, they also undergo a series of rigorous training programs and tests, which are designed to ensure that they're both physically and mentally fit to go into space. Put simply, unlike some of the other lights on this list, it's highly improbable that the lights seen by these astronauts are caused by things like paranoia, superstition, overactive imaginations, or people's minds playing tricks on them. Evidence also suggests that this phenomenon was witnessed long before humans ever went to space. In fact, studies on the subject suggest that sightings have existed for more than a millennium. For example, records show that during the 16th century, researchers mistook the planet Venus, which appeared to be near the moon, as a daytime star. So who knows? Number 2. Light Flashes from Deep Space Last year, astronomers with the Breakthrough LISTEN project, a $100 million project aimed at discovering evidence of civilizations beyond Earth, witnessed a series of repeating light pulses emanating from a dwarf galaxy 3 billion light years from Earth, also known as FRB 121102. Within one hour's time, 21 flashes of light came from the distant galaxy. These light pulses are called fast radio bursts, or FRBs. Not as good a name as Steve, right? Before this incident, they were already known to occur on FRB 121102. What's so special about this particular instance then? According to Andrew Simeon, director of the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Research Center at the University of California in Berkeley, the bursts were previously unknown to occur at such a rapid frequency. FRBs were discovered in 2007 and remain largely a mystery to this day, even to scientists. Some researchers believe that they could be alien signals are otherwise associated with extraterrestrials. One theory posits that FRBs are a form of laser-generated technology designed to blast alien crafts through space at high speeds. On the more traditional end of the spectrum, some experts speculate that FRBs are probably emitted by fast rotating neutron stars. The Breakthrough Listen team made it clear that they don't consider FRBs to be evidence of alien life, but they also haven't ruled out the possibility. What do you think? And now for another catchy name. Number 1. Neutron Star RX J0806.4-4123 This past September, a team of astronomers led by Bettina Poselt from Pennsylvania State University made an unusual discovery while using the Hubble Space Telescope, a strange emission of infrared light emerging from the region around a neutron star. You can see the name up above. Good luck remembering that one. It was unlike anything previously seen among astronomers within the scientific community. The weird infrared light wasn't the only confusing aspect of their discovery. Neutron stars are known for being complex and strange to begin with. When massive stars reach the end of their life cycles, they undergo explosions called supernovas and their outer layers of material are blown off. More often than not, the supernova's mass isn't enough to produce a black hole, causing the center region to collapse under the force of gravity. In such an event, protons and electrons are forced together so tightly that they create neutrons. The result? A neutron star. At 20 to 30 kilometers in diameter, neutron stars are typically rather small in comparison to other types of stars. However, they're extremely dense, with a mass of around 1.4 times that of our Sun. To give you an idea, one teaspoonful of a neutron star would weigh 1 billion tons, according to NASA. The high density of neutron stars cause them to have extremely powerful gravitational fields and to spin incredibly fast, sometimes several hundred times per second. Some neutron stars, known as pulsars, emit intense beams of radiation. 
This neutron star is a pulsar. Neutron stars generally aren't studied using infrared light. Instead, researchers typically use X-rays, gamma rays, and radio waves, under which neutron stars are brighter and easier to detect. Poselt's team broke away from this tendency and observed the star using Hubble's infrared vision. What they detected was an extended infrared signal that was undetectable at virtually all other wavelengths a finding that had never been seen before. Two possible explanations for the infrared emission were proposed by scholars in the Astrophysical Journal. The first theory holds that the infrared light is not coming from the neutron star, but instead from a disk of material surrounding the star, which is made mostly of dust. Theory number two entertains the prospect of a feature known as pulsar wind nebula, created from an interaction between a wind blowing off of the neutron star and interstellar space gas. Neutron stars with a strong magnetic field rotate fast, causing particles to accelerate and thereby generating a pulsar wind. The curiosity of scholars and researchers has certainly been piqued by this discovery. As things currently stand, they're still trying to figure out the perplexing mystery behind this unique neutron star. Thanks for watching! What did you think about these strange lights? Let me know in the comments below! Remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time! Bye!